All right, so round three, we play Dubov. Okay, interesting pairing in round three. Um, let's see what he's going to do here. Okay, let's play knight f6. Let's play here. Let's play here. Let's play here. I feel like we've had this before, by the way. He's going to go like, uh, we, 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 we've had this like 20 times lately. Um, you go here, you go here, go here. All pretty normal. You take, you take. Go here. And so in this line, you know, uh, we do have equal pawns. Um, Black has um, the double pawn on c5, but I was just going to say it's not such a big weakness <laughs> because c5 can come very quickly. Um, and it seems like both of these guys, since they're playing so fast, right, we're very, we're squarely, squarely in theory here. So um, keep our bullet here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, just put 30 seconds on the clock for both of these guys. Um, <laughs> Okay, but I, you know, I, I think um, blacks, you know, in this line, black really doesn't have too much to worry about. Um, you have, you know, this pawn on c4 gives black some, um, gives black a nice uh, amount of space on the queen side. Mm -hmm. I think you, you know, there's not really any huge weaknesses on either side. Um, yeah. I think for a long time, so he goes bishop e3, which is a pretty reasonable move, doesn't. Doesn't really change a whole lot with the position. Now, there are a couple options. I can play queen h5 here. Um, it's just a matter of which one I want to play more than anything. Queen a5 is also completely reasonable. Mm. Which one do I want to do is really the only question. Huh. Which one do I want to play? Many different options here. Just trying to think it through. I guess I'll go for this one. It's not not the only one, but it's it's one of a couple options that are completely fine here. I think for black, but we'll see. Is he gonna play like knight d two? Is he gonna play something else? He's got e five. He's got knight d four. I guess. Not very exciting. I will say that. I mean, another thing about this move, queen a5, is you're also controlling the a-file. So maybe white could have thought about playing rook a1 instead, but that obviously can't happen here. Mm -hmm. That rook also has a nice home on the d1 square. Um, so, you know, these, these positions definitely are, mm -hmm. they, they, they're, they're a bit flexible, right? There's still a lot of different ideas that you can go for. Right, 94 has been played. Now bishop is under attack. I'm not sure if black wants to give up this bishop because it's not, it's not the best bishop. Uh, it's not the worst bishop here. You can always bring it back. Or you can you can just give up and play rook to c8 and then <laughs> bring this um, knight finally here. Yeah, Hikaru doesn't seem to care that rook on c8 is going to do a nice job. <laughs> the bad bishop take it. Right. And, and, you know, this is a very typical idea in chess where you just say, okay, if you want to trade pieces, mm -hmm. you know, that's fine. We can trade pieces, but you're going to do it on my terms. So in this case, if you go knight takes c6, I'm going to, it's going to help me because I can develop my knight. And then that knight very quickly goes to b4 and d3 and um, you get a lot of activity. So yeah, h3, there is a move like you would never thought of. Perhaps he was afraid of knight g4 kind of moves like uh, with Chad X's right. bishop, uh, bishop e8. Uh, he kind of is making this uh, most like normal moves, not uh, any uh, sharp moves. Just uh, that's that's kind of strategy of Hikaru to waste uh, his opponent's time. It always feels like he finds some way to just put pressure on you or make you you know make you think twice about yeah. Okay, so he plays f4, which is actually an interesting move. Um, to try. I have knight c6 here. e5 is also maybe a move. I don't know if it's a great move. What about knight a6 or something? Let me think.
E5 is also a very interesting move here. I just don't know if it's a good move or not. You know, for example, if that F file opens, do you have ideas with like knight h6 check, where after g takes h6, then you have like rook takes f6. But that's that's only if you know the the F file opens up. So I I don't think we'll see e5, but I've been wrong before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Come on, they love the knight. Here, here. Because this knight has not played at all. Well, let's let's think about it. So if you do go. So let's just say c6. you play knight a6 or knight c6. I guess they both look reasonable. Yeah, knight c6 actually, uh, after e5, you're pretty much forced to take this knight on d4 because then your knight has not a perfect square. Um, if knight goes on d7, then knight on c6 will be hanging. So uh, you, you do also yeah. have knight b4. Knight b4 yeah. is an intermezzo. Yeah, After so knight c6, e5, and then knight b4 is possible. Goes knight a6. All right. E5 is the move uh, which can be played next. So let's see. So if e5 is played, do I go knight b4 first? Maybe. Ooh, actually, I like this because then I'm supporting the other knight coming to d5. Mm. And oh, now right. I think I bring this one and I, I have to say, I really, I'm starting to like this position more and more for black. I'm not sure if it's significantly better, but I feel mm -hmm. like, I feel like I would prefer the black pieces here. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I, I do like all the pieces uh, of, of like, even this Bishop on eight is just a nice piece to be <laughs> a pretty future. Um, This game has gotten quite sharp, actually, from, from something that was very, very tame, just maybe like six, seven moves ago. Goes king h2, which, I don't know, somehow it strikes me as a weird move that doesn't feel like the right move. And I'm not really sure why, but it just it just doesn't seem right. I guess his idea is knight d3 is knight d5. So that's his whole plan. So if I go... Here, I want to hold the pawn, maybe go knight c5, maybe go knight d3, because now on knight d3, there's no knight c6 either. It's going to be interesting after the game to look at this, because I feel like, I don't feel like what Dubov did was right, but I'm also not sure if queen a6 is the right move either. Oh, there goes the cam again. Okay, there we go. Okay, now it should be fairly flat. <laughs> All right. Okay, goes queen e2, logical move, because knight c5 doesn't really do much. Knight d3 is a move that I think I'm going to play, though. I mean, knight d3 looks right, because I cover c6. No f5, so he loses the pawn on e5, I think. Although, maybe not. Hmm. Yeah, he does have f5, I just realized, because now lose a pawn on e6, but is that actually such a big deal? It probably isn't because I have bishop c6. Queen h5 is not an issue. c6, knight d5, queen b7. Hmm. Knight e6. Maybe bishop f7 is a move there. Let's go like knight d4. I mean, I think this should be okay. So I'm going to take. It's going to take. I'm going to take. It's going to take. And then I, I have rook b8. I also have bishop f7. Yeah, so bishop f7 looks like the right move to me optically. Maybe it's not, but it looks... Okay, bishop c6, knight d5 is the only other question mark. But after queen there, oh, I have knight c6 maybe at the end of that line too. Bishop c6, knight d5, queen b7. Knight d7, I just take. I mean, this should be a draw after bishop c6. I'm just trying to make sure there are no tricks. 
Knight e5, queen b7. Knight g7, I just take. Knight e4. Just bishop d6 looks fine. Bishop d6. D8. That looks fine, so I think I'm going to go for it. I hope this isn't a blunder, but I, I don't think it is. So I can always take. It's a little bit shaky playing this move. I mean, it's a little bit dangerous. But I think everything is actually kind of holding together here. Knight e7, king f7. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, everything's holding. So it should be, this should be completely fine. I'm trying to find some way. So with white, right, in this position, you see the knight on e6. <clears throat> I'm trying to find some way to attack g7, but I can't seem to do it because this knight on e5 is actually an incredibly strong defender, right? I want to play a move like queen g4, but I obviously can't. I also, you know, had an idea, okay, maybe I want to play queen h5, queen f7 check, but again, this knight on e5 <laughs> covers everything. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, and it's also, you know, the more I look at this, it's very difficult to dislodge these knights, right? The knights on d3 and e5 are very strongly connected. And, you know, maybe you have an idea like bishop d4 at some point to try to dislodge it. But, you know, if let's say bishop d4 happens, a move like bishop f6 will hold it. Yeah. Knight d4 has been played here. White went for this one. Uh, okay. And he wants to get to the queen now. And uh, queen is a new bishop here. Uh, <laughs> and then queen get, will get on d5 square. So yeah, it, but it's not, I, I, d I don't know if it's forced to take on g2. It still seems very logical, right? I, I, I assume he will play it, but maybe, okay, takes, takes, and now... What is the idea for okay? But now, because we were talking also about rook b8 before, so can I can I just try to be greedy and attack this b pawn? I don't mm. think I'm getting checkmated in any <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> <laughs> right, these positions you always have to be so cautious. Um, I think I'm gonna play on. This might be insane by me, by the way. I, I wouldn't be shocked if there's if this is insane, but I feel like I should play on here somehow. Which, I mean, it's very unclear whether that's the right decision or not. Because objectively, white's still probably fine. But I feel like I'm up a minute on the clock. And, I mean, maybe I can do something here. There shouldn't really be a lot of risk for me either. Which is the other very important factor. A lot of, like, when you take draws versus not taking draws. It comes down to, the, um, to that. I didn't see knight f5, actually. Which could be quite scary. But I think I can just go here. King h8, knight d6, rook d8 should be okay. Should be okay. Maybe bishop f8 was better too, though. Well, this is, yeah, I'm not really sure if I should have played on, but I don't think I'm in danger here. I, I'm, I think I'm always okay. So if I presume that I'm always okay here, then I, then playing on makes sense. Although, again, realistically, do I have anything here? Probably not. I just forgot about knight f5, too. So I, I probably should have just taken the draw there. But we'll see. Goes knight e4. Very reasonable move. Um, now, if I take and play rook b5... Wait, is this queen trapped? Wait, is this queen actually trapped here after rook b5? Wait a second. So if I take and play rook b5... Bishop c5? Yeah, okay, with his knight so on I... e5? Yeah. So if I take on b2, do you just ignore me and move the king? I don't with know if you go to or... h1 or g1. Are you going I think to check with this rook? Oh, there's a check. Okay, okay. Right, right, right. There's no, there's no back rank mate yet. <laughs> no, it's a check. It's a check. Uh, I don't know whether it matters if I go to h1 or g1. I, I'm not sure. 
Um, Ooh. Knight okay, maybe it did top. matter, but I don't know why. Knight of three? Is that Knight of three? Oh my, wait. No, but not so bad. Not so bad. <laughs> Ah, you can play queen a2, I think, and uh, just to try to checkmate. I see. Crazy. But, Crazy. Okay, but hold on. I'm not done yet. Queen a2. I'm going to play knight takes f6. <gasps> because now my queen covers the g2 square. G2 square. And now you're getting back ranked. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Rook b2 was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I, I think that... Wait. Oh, oh, oh did all this happen in the game? Yeah. So Rook captured the b2 pawn, and after king h1, then Rook to b5. Queen was Rook under attack. b5. And the... Oh, my God, the queen had nowhere to go. Queen was trapped, yeah? yeah. Or... Uh, d4? Queen d4? What happens after queen d4? Do I pin your knight with queen b7 or something like that? I think queen c6, just to have something. You just need to get this queen out of this uh, file. I see. OK, so now queen b7 forces the trade of queens, I, I think. Yeah, pretty much. If you play queen d4, now knight c5, this knight is pinned. So you have to take this queen here. And end game with extra c4 pawn and these beautiful pieces is, is, is easy to play with extra time on the clock. Yeah, it certainly seems very scary. Yeah, okay, so he takes first. I think you just have to... Oh, no, actually, you have an option here. You can take on g6, or you can take on d5. Mm -hmm. I think d5 <clears throat> is more safe. Take on d5, then rook takes on c5, and then just push the pawns. Yeah, he went for this. Rook c5, knight is under attack. Maybe knight f2, e3, to also threaten this checkmate here. Right. And then I also wonder... Okay, at some point, knight c3 trying to blockade makes a lot of sense. Um, you just try to kind of hold on for dear life here, but it, it actually might not be so easy to push this pawn. Let's see what Dubov's going to do here. 40 seconds and ticking. It was knight d4. I mean, I assume I just play h6 here, create the lift for the king. I mean, objectively, this is a draw of perfect play, but I'm going to be going for... Huh? Wait. What am I... Wait, C3? Ah, he has some Rook G8 trick. He has some Rook G8 sneakiness. Okay, so I see what his point is. His point here is that he's basically saying, if I don't go for this, I'm just going to lose the game. Now, if I check King G2, check... King h1, knight f2, king g1, knight h3, king h1. No need to do that. I'm up so much time here that I should just take the safe route out. Yeah, just take the safe route. No no reason getting cheeky here. Oh, but now he has knight e6 or something too, which I... Ah, oh, shoot. I forgot about knight e6. Crud. Okay. Yeah, knight e... Actually, this could be really tricky now. I think I have to go... Here, maybe? I'm up 30 seconds, so it's still very well within the margins. And he's on a touchpad, so that gives me a big edge here in any scramble. Yeah, he's, 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 he's just out of time. Big win, three out of three, you guys. Big, big win. All right, we're on three out of three, and we keep rolling right along. Very, very good. Very, very good start. Very good start. Cams are good. Here we go. Round four. Let's get rolling. We cannot hear you. Yes, you guys can hear me now. Let me check. I'm not muted anymore. So yeah. Okay, we're playing Swords in round four. Big round here. I want to win this game. If I win this game, I think I'm in very good shape to qualify. This is a very important round. Um, okay, let's go E3 here. Um, keep this pretty straightforward. We're on three out of three so far. He plays C5. Interesting, because now I have the c3 bishop a3 trick. Hopefully, he just made a blunder. Uh, the screen isn't right. No, the screen screen looks right to me. Yeah, it looks it looks completely right. Um, so yeah, okay, queen c7. I thought b. Wait a second, queen c7 is it c3 or b4? I think I just go c3 here, because if he takes, I have bishop a3 anyway, and we transpose, and otherwise I have b4, and I think I'm fine. 
Although maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. Whatever. Who cares? It's just chess at the end of the day. What's the worst that can happen in, in the great game of chess? Hmm. Goes a5, which now he does actually invite me to play b4, which is kind of interesting. So I, I think now... I mean, but queen c5 still runs into bishop a3. So the question is, can I delay it one more move? Is there a way to delay b4? I don't think there is. So I'm just going to go for it. If he plays knight e4, I go queen c2. If d6, I just trade. Knight c6, I go a3. I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm just a terrible chess player. I'm missing something. But this looks... Knight e8. Now, that just looks like a very strange move, too. But he has a point here. He wants to play d6, which actually makes some sense. Um, let's think about this. He wants to go d6. So it's like some kind of weird theory or something. I, I don't even know what this is, but I think I'm going to go here. Because d6, now I have knight b5 at some point, I think. I can even just trade and play knight d2. Although I suspect I should have used more time before blitzing out this move. Like maybe I should have used a little bit more time to see if queen b3 was a move too. But let's see. So he does play d6. So, okay, I mean, I guess I go knight b5. I mean, I don't know. d7, queen e7, and knight d4 back. I mean, this is very strange. Very, very strange, this whole game. Can obviously trade and play like knight d2. e5, knight b5, which is probably good. Huh, what is this? Knight b5, queen d8, e d6, c b4. Takes, takes, and then if I go knight d4 back. It's got no central pawns there. Only question is, is that scary or not if I go back? I don't know. I'm not really buying this, so I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm just not buying this at all from him. This just doesn't look... I, I, I'm i kind of... I'm calling Balagna here on this. I also realize on queen d8, I can go a3, and he can't take. I'm going to call Balagna. I think he's kind of making up some nonsense here. If I go a3, knight c6... Still very, still very, very strange, though. Thing is, do I have any other moves besides this? I mean, I'm up a pawn there, too, actually, if I play that line. Very, very strange. Play a3, knight c6, knight d2. Takes, takes. Queen d5, knight b3. I mean, it's still a pawn. Very, very strange game. If I trade everything down and go knight e4. I know, somehow I'm just not believing this. Somehow I'm honestly just not believing this whole thing. And, and so we have a really interesting position here. What is happening with this pawn on e7 getting taken off the board? Um, Hikaru is being extremely aggressive here. He's up one pawn however he's behind in development so what do you what do you think about this position so far um uh, i i liked i liked black's position here but then i saw this bishop b2 and white is just ready to castle and i'm also a materialistic chess player and i do like extra pawns so i think white is just fine yeah in this so definitely i, I think you're right i think it's you know White is up a pawn, and so the onus is on Black to to prove he's he's equal somehow. He's gotta he's gotta play actively and and generate play. So how can you go about doing that? Um, he chose the way to to capture the pawn on c three. So if you take by the knight, then knight on d four will be uh, will 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 be captured. So bishop takes c three has happened, and um, hmm. is there? Feel some take on d4 because this knight is so annoying. I would I would love to have this move bishop b6 to attack only two pawn, but the knight is really annoying. How about take on d4? Bishop okay. takes on d4. Um, now do you play check, check or Queen bishop d2. e6 or something? <clears throat> the thing is, you're trading a lot of pieces here, which maybe ends up being okay, but. 
6, A3. Maybe annoying is the wrong word, but it feels, feels this just, it just doesn't feel right somehow. Okay, so he takes. So yeah, now I realize there is a question mark. Do I take with a pawn or not? This is a big, tricky question. Um, my instinct is to take with a pawn and castle. Because if I take with a bishop, he has some queen before. And I, I think this is there are more chances to win this than there are to win the end game, I guess. Although, actually, I realize he's got that. Uh, he's got bishop g4, which I forgot about. Okay, so I guess I go here and trade and take it. Uh, I actually, I should have gone knight d2 also. Still better, but it's going to be kind of hard to win this. I'm actually not even sure I'm better anymore. I think I might have just made a mistake here. I think I did, but we'll see. Hmm. Forgot about bishop g4. Very annoying move. Hmm. Okay, now he goes queen d7, which I'm a little surprised by. I can play d5 here, but I assume I should just castle. Goes knight c7. Um, and he wants to blockade. So he's actually okay being down a pawn here, which is kind of interesting. Maybe he's not actually, but um, how do I do this? It's going to be very hard to prove anything here. If I play d5, I don't really want to play d5. I think I'm just going to go here. Knight d5, probably I go like queen f3 or bishop b2. Again, not not really what I was hoping for. But it should be okay. Yeah, I, I did something wrong here. I think this should have been good for me somehow. This will be an interesting game to review afterwards. Plays queen d5, which I'm also kind of surprised by. Because now I can maybe even just trade into an end game and play. Maybe. Maybe not. Knight c3. I mean, knight d2 is a pretty obvious move. Is it bad for some reason? I don't think it is. So I'm just going to play knight d2. If he takes, I take, of course. I mean, it is one pawn at the end of the day that I am up here. A pawn is a pawn. I wonder if he missed. I wonder if he missed knight d2, because while I think black is still completely fine, it feels like I'm kind of close to having an advantage here. Probably has to be very, very precise with how he plays it now. Again, it's it's ten zero, so there's no increments. So. That's the other part of this. I need to get him to use his time. I need him to use all that time if I can. So what, I'm up one minute on the clock. It's not not anything special, obviously. Plays rook a3, which is also, I think, a very, very good move. The only thing about rook a3 that I didn't like is that now I think I can start to try to play me with knight b3, maybe knight f3 also. Um, I have knight b3... And rook db1 or something, and king f1 maybe? It's rook c4 though, which is a little bit annoying. King f1 is a move, but that's just a draw. Knight b3. It's not really getting it done. Knight f3 is the other try. I guess I'll go here. I mean, I guess I have rook db1 or something. I mean, I'm trying to somehow keep... Chances alive to win this game. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying somehow, desperately, to keep the game a little bit unclear here. Probably it's not going to work, but it's, it's a try at least. And he is using a lot of time. That is the one, one very important part here. He's using a ton of time. Because he's trying to be super precise and not make any blunders. <sighs> but again, we'll see. It goes b6, which is interesting. Because it's not the move I expected. Um, okay, I don't know bishop c1. Maybe. I 
I'm going to go here, attack the rook. I'm going to go there, as expected. And I think I'm just going to go a3, and maybe bishop c1 next move. Yeah, he played this move b6. That was so strange yeah. to play here, b6 uh, move. King f1 uh, was kicked, uh, was kicking this rook uh, on c2, and now we have uh, a3 there. Mm -hmm. So, um... But it's, yeah, I... Black, uh, sorry, white is just so tied down, right? Because you can't move the rook on b1, you can't really move the rook on a1, and you can't, the bishop on b2 can't really move either. I mean, you can go to c1, but I'll take on d4. And, you know, the rook on c2 is the best piece on the board. It's completely dominating white's position. Um, yeah. Yeah, in this move, bishop f6, it's just it's just a very good move and win some time here. Probably he will play next this one, and he can even start to push on the king side and even get more space advantage, kick this knight out. h5, I'll play h4, of course. King g7. Now I go here, because now bishop d4, I think I can take... Oh, it doesn't work. Uh, just doesn't work. Whoops. Whoopsie, whoopsies, whoopsies. Ah, okay, interesting. After king g7, now I cannot take on d4 because, um, or actually, no, I have knight c3. Wait, hold on. I'm a little bit confused. Here. So yeah, but it pins the, pins the um, diagonal. Like, all, a lot of pieces in white have no problem. Like, white, that's actually what you wanted, right? To give everything back and open up the position. So, yeah. Maybe I, black should not I have a funny that. move here, which is mm -hmm. I can actually go rook takes d4. Because knight takes, bishop <laughs> takes, and now actually I'm threatening the rook on a1 and the pawn on f2. Whoa, he misses it. Wait a second. Okay, wait, he misses it. Just bishop d4, bishop b2, knight c3 is a draw. Okay, wait. Now it's kind of game on again. Maybe I can do something here. Wait a second. Let's think about this. Should do rook a3, trade, trade, rook b5, maybe, bishop d2, bishop a3, rook b5. Yeah, now it's kind of game on again, I think. Um, okay, let's go here. He missed it. That's a huge miss. If I played rook b5, he had rook a5. So I go here to cut it off. I mean, that's that's just... that's. Uh, people like to say, what is it they call it? The, the Magnus effect, right? So I'm going to go and say this is the Hikaru effect, where I basically I just... He, he just he assumed there was some trick which did not exist. Because now it's... I mean, now it's tricky again for black. Yeah, he goes rook c7, but now I have rook b5. And now I start to get active. Um, let's go here, target the knight. Knight e5 here as well. Um, now let's go here. That's just a huge miss by him. I think I'm going to go, uh, here to idea bishop b2. And this is not easy to play at all for black. Now, once I get the bishop to b2 with the active knight, his rook is passive. His rook on d6 was on c2. It was an awesome rook. And now, I mean, now it's not at all clear. Well, maybe it's still probably it's still probably a draw if he plays this correctly. But I mean, there there might be chances now to trick him. Let's go here. Yeah, there definitely might be chance because I have knight f three, and then I can take and I have rook d one. I mean, it's quite tricky now. Quite tricky, in fact. Yeah, now now it's very tricky to play for black. Still, it's still a draw. I'm quite sure with perfect play, but. With two minutes and the time is ticking, anything can kind of happen now. He has to be very, very careful how he plays this. Very careful. And the problem is he's he's also running out of time now. This is the other big problem he has here. How would take it? Oh, you know what I do? Okay. First, after knight d4, I go knight takes d4 first, and then mm -hmm. bishop takes d4, and then I go rook d1. And now the pin is much stronger. Oh, yes. Yeah. So now this starts getting really, this gets really scary. Or at the very least, you may just lose a pawn on b6 or something. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's uh, it starts to be. Yeah, rook b4 is this, a threat now. This feels very, very, very shaky now. True. So no, yeah, I don't like this at all. So you can't do that. Oh, rook okay. um, six to guard b6 pawn. Okay. I never liked this pawn on b6. It costs so much time to black. Um, yeah. yeah, I feel like Dara really missed his moment where maybe rook d4 earlier was the right move, but 
he's also he's hugely down on time. He's two and a half minutes down or so. Um, I I think Hikaru might be on his way to being four and zero in this tournament because there's no easy way to reclaim this pawn right now. Right. Like he gave good position to the opponent and uh, then the opponent was struggling to find the best way to convert it and uh, he spent a lot of time and it didn't work out and now he has he has like extra two minutes on the clock. That's huge, huge uh, time time uh, on the clock, especially when there is no increment. <laughs> yeah. And he's getting very low on time now. Goes rook a4. I mean, not really all that worried. I think I just go here. Okay, finally, I think he makes a blunder. I think if I take and play rook here, and then I go rook d3, he loses, I think. I think he blundered, finally. He defended really well for a long time, but he made this one move. He just missed the pawn on d4, and after that, I mean, it's still a draw, but he gets passive, and it's hard to play, and his time starts ticking, and we're going to win the game now. He's down to 25 seconds. It's just GG. I just go rook d3, and I collect I collect something. All right, looking good. We're going to be on four out of four. We're going to be on four out of four. Looking very, very good here. Very likely, I mean, this, this clinch is a qualification. Very likely, but again, you, you don't you don't count your chickens until the eggs have hatched. Let's go here. Let's go here. Just take the pawn, of course. Yep, there we go. We got the win. Four out of four. Very, very good. <laughs>